in uh, day one in my introduction I uh, share you that this is a, uh, actually a glimpse of my thesis which I you know wrote in 2008 for my studies at Masters of Indigenous Studies in Trump's University. Trump's University. So my thesis is still uh, in the, you can find in the Google, in the Trump's University archive. The one decades long, uh, you know, land rights situation is not that much improved a lot, and the policies are still, uh, you know, pending. So uh, what I wrote that situation uh, 10 years back, I think still people are, you know, uh, having uh, the same problem. So I think uh, still my research work is still valid and also we can, uh, this one can imp uh, contribute in policy and also the research work further. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, my presentation is, uh, you know, uh, covering that I try to, you know, uh, cover in the two uh, phase. Uh, first one in the during the colonial period, and also uh, the next one in the in the post-colonial period, uh, particularly from the since 1947. So I'm trying to, you know, the, you know, uh, try to find uh, these uh, two phases of the how was the land being the, you know, people lo started to lose the land. Uh, uh, this is the map, you know, uh, what I'm uh, trying to focus in the, the red uh, color one. This is the Chitong Hill Text area in Bangladesh map. Uh, uh, this is the overall map, is uh, here like this. Uh, so it will be, you know, just will give you some idea about which area I'm, I'm talking about, you know. Uh, well, <coughs> I'll also come, uh, coming to the point, I'd just like to try to draw you some, you know, idea about the indigenous people issues. Uh, that, uh, you know, when we talk about the indigenous people issues, there are, it's not a uh, unique thing. There are 45 ethnic groups are, you know, claiming themselves as indigenous peoples, both in the, in the plain land and hill land. So, Chidong Hill Treks, actually there are uh, ethnic groups, uh, 11 ethnic groups was been uh, living the over there since the time immemorial issues of you know how to la keep land more in favor of them for the interest for the revenue interest so <clears throat> and on in the same time you know um, there and the, this is the, this is the second point one also same then why uh, and how the bit, uh, bit is trying to try to promote the you know plus uh, plow, uh, plan, uh, plow uh, cultivation in 1869, they actually try, started to, you know, thinking, uh, taking the initiative, you know, to, to change the complete economic uh, livelihoods over there. And, but people at the beginning, there was no much responses. Only uh, 38 families we found in the beginning, only they got response and they, they give re response. Uh, so it was, though it was a huge uh, budget, they, uh, they had, you know, the the gap, you know, and also. Uh, but over the period, you know, uh, or more than uh, three decades long, government have you know, tried to, you know, patronize, you know, plow cultivation. But even though people are continue, continued, you know, zoom cultivation, we found that in 901, even 86 percent people were involved with the, their own traditional economy. So it, it was the you know the scenario. Another you know uh, you know economic uh, dimension was uh, you know we uh, pre, uh, we have found that in 1960s, with the support of USAID, there was a you know Capra Dam, uh, uh, hydroelectric dam project was started over there, and and uh, you know the amount of land and uh, our uh, area was submerged under the water, and people were displaced and. You see, the out of 18,000 families, um, um, only 27 you know, percent people, nearly 5,000 only rehabilitated. Though there was a, but before that, before the dam, there was no the uh, assessment was not conducted, and how it in the, in the, there is no rehabilitation policy. Though in, it was a, you know budget allocated 51 million US dollar at that time only 2.6 million were you know, allocated to the compensation family, but most of the family actually not, you know, not given the, uh, you know, you know, the, the package program, under the package program because of there are some bureaucratic things and, and the issues of land, you know, entitlement. So the bureaucrats then, okay, whether they may be asked 
them the whether they have land or not but in the same time you know I, I already mentioned you that those in the those who are sitting in cultivation they don't have a land rights there because in terms of uh, you know state's uh, point of view so that as they couldn't show the, the paper legal documents so they didn't get compensated and you might know that um, uh, you know there are some um, and very few uh, government able to you know settle in the other areas in the CSTs, but you might know more than 50,000 people they cross the boundary and they are still living in. And, uh, you know about and also uh, I'm not going to the in the last one that about the debate about who is indigenous or not. This is a very old uh, debate and it's never been uh, you know resolved because of government sometimes recognize and sometimes say yes there are indigenous people sometimes they say no. In, uh, <coughs> Uh, so in the colonial period, I also trying to you know focusing two phases, uh, the co company period and also uh, and the company period, especially before the crown uh, taking of uh, over uh, you know charts the CST, it was ruled by the East India Company. Uh, the, the, the actually the British company they came to for a business purpose in the Indian subcontinent, but. Uh, but this, they slowly, you know, take over the, you know, uh, control the power and, uh, and and also the authority, establish authority, and they did actually uh, did a very good job uh, for their business purpose. Uh, so it's a uh, you might know about the how the you know uh, British uh, before starting the uh, establishing British colonization and uh, how company they make the business and also you know using the local power and etc so what i found that but this in chitong hill tracks uh, um, they and the 100 years long if i understand your question is you know, uh, that what i mentioned in 1900 regulation uh, in also there is also one of the biggest you know the provision was uh, the create, uh, to restrict the people's mo migration the natural migration that period there was no political boundary at all but within the Chidong hill tracks areas uh, out of the Chidong hill tracks you see in the map that uh, uh, there is a from the Chidong hill track uh, from the Chidogong or Tripura state that time and also in Mizoram or Myanmar from the Arakan state. Uh, it was then they prohibited not to in in the Chitong Hiltex area. Those who are to be remained there, only they can cultivate jhum cultivation and those who are not that area, they are not allowed to go in that area. So it was the you know initial um, you know uh, plan of the government which is reflected in the laws, you know. But later on, they also given up the you know space to you know allow to move from the plain land to the hill land they you know changes the some law I cho but i did not you know that must come you know analyze the you know uh, how the 1900 uh, regulation also changes over the period of time you know if you say uh, 1900 now 2018 so over the 118 years it has changes a lot uh, because of those who are in power they always you know, for their interest, they changes the law, not the local people interest law. So I work at an archive, and I'm usually preoccupied with lots of different kinds of archives. And okay. um, something to think about in research like this is that often uh, a lot of this research relies, of course, on uh, empirical data yeah. that is produced by whatever research and existing archives there are. Yeah. And those archives are also often produced through the documentation and records kept by those who were oppressing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And of course one produces one's own methodologies mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. gathering different kinds of data that either mm -hmm. may counter or may only reinforce the narrative of oppression that we are mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. by this kind of occupation and, and discrimination, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing that we sort of miss sight of is that in a lot of research about some of these areas, we end up falling into uh, categories that, that say, in this case, 
mm -hmm. the colonizers themselves have produced. Mm -hmm. The category of people, the category of land, the category of resources, mm -hmm. whereas they actually mean many different things mm -hmm. to the people who are actually living there mm -hmm. or who are inhabitants. And these might sometimes come out of tradition, these might have sometimes come out of negotiations and new inventions mm -hmm. responding to the kinds of um, forces Mm -hmm. that are either taking away things. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is a longish question, but mm -hmm. I think it's relevant to the archive only to say that how does one also inflect the category of land, the category of people, mm -hmm. the category of all sorts of resources, mm -hmm. um, which otherwise the colonial mm -hmm. epistemology yeah. flattens out as this, 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 yeah. this one has been taken away, this is used for this much, this, per this much percentage goes into that, yeah. uh, and instead inflects them with other meaning. Line you have drawn, actually this also was part of our thing. So can a different map be drawn? And I mean this also in the sense that even by, via language and translation initiatives. Uh, yes, I think mm. what you have to realize is that in terms of population community, mm. uh, there is a difference between the this land is the, the Tripura people's land, actually, you know? And before, uh, before this bound, you know, boundary, what we have seen now, before 47, it was different. And this boundary, and, and you know, uh, it was not even ruled by the British government uh, until, uh, even, uh, until 47 even, you know. And then, you know, they just, when they create the boundary, they, uh, so the boundary concept was started from then, but before that, uh, people live the people uh, from here and there also and also this area you know the people who speak Kogburo, they uh, share the same language and culture and identity so i i, I if i if i if i, if I go or the start to talk that way also uh, how the you know people started to losing cultural identity uh, then also will be the another you know discussion uh, point of view you know because here the community who lives here most of their communities or, you know, their uh, li people lives also in other state in India and also uh, in the Tripura state in Mizoram and also in Arakan and also in the Plain Land, you know. So, but when they, uh, uh, you know, started to create the boundary, the people become very stuck that area. So, and they be become disconnected with the uh, other uh, own people. So, the Tripura people in Chitong Hiltex, they are not completely disconnected with the Tripura people in India. So this is also another historical things. So I'm not, uh, I think you, you all, uh, uh, you wanted to know about the more about these issues. Uh, and also, not that it can be answered now, but yeah. how can we think about producing other maps entirely? And not that that will immediately impact yeah. legality, yeah. but I think knowledge and these sort of things are what make people yeah. and they land differently and produce other archives which yeah. then the colonial archive yeah. has to take into cognizance otherwise yeah. they say you don't exist because your archive doesn't exist yeah this uh, depends on you know the area of uh, topics you how you you know trying to you know uh, do research so it's a uh, you depends on research project you know so if we think that decolonizing research methodologies uh, i think this map also could be uh, different yeah. yeah so yeah so I do agree with you yeah if I may add something isn't there um, slight complication also this question of um, trying to deconstruct the master's house with the master's tools yeah. so if you if you um, um, I understand this um, need, in a way, to create new maps, but the question of mapping in itself is, is, is also highly problematic. But of course, it, it comes down to practicalities. Yeah. Um, and, and going back to that question of practicalities and what could be these other ways of um, finding you know, forward solutions, um, I mean, it's easy to say what I'm going to say, and I'm sure it's incredibly difficult to, to, to enact, but the question of civil disobedience. Um, so what would happen if there were civil disobedience across this border so that the communities on either side of them simply just were together? I mean, I've, I, I hear this because last night uh, there was some discussion with regards to the Rohingya situation, which is going to be one of my next questions to you. 
um, and I understand that the border control police were told at the time not to open the gates, and there were many complicated reasons why the Bangladeshi government did not want to recognize that situation, then did, and now don't want to again. Um, but the police at that point decided, well, they could see the fires on the other side of the border. Um, so yes, they kept them closed during the day, but at night they opened them. Um, so um, and, and going back to that question of practicalities and what could be these other ways of um, finding, you know, forward solutions. Um, I mean, it's easy to say what I'm going to say, and I'm sure it's incredibly difficult to to, to enact. But the question of civil disobedience. Um, so, what would happen if there were civil disobedience across those borders, so that the communities on either side of them simply just were together? I mean, I I, I hear those because. Last night, so there was some discussion with regards to the Rohingya situation, which is going to be one of my next questions to you. Um, and I understand that the border control police were told at the time not to open the gates. And there were many complicated reasons why the Bangladeshi government did not want to recognize that situation, then did, and now don't want to again. Um, but the police at that point decided, well, they could see the fires on the other side of the border. Um, so yes, they kept them closed during the day, but at night they opened them. Um, so there's an instance of civil disobedience, which you know creates these sort of possibilities. Could there be other forms of civil disobedience to, to you know, yeah, position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to the shifting cultivators, because of the issues of you know how to la keep land more in favor of them for the interest for the revenue interest. So. <coughs> And on in the same time, you know, um, they, and the, this, is the, this is the second point one also same, then why uh, and how the BIT, uh, BIT is trying to try to promote the, you know, plus, uh, plow, cult, uh, plow cultivation in 1869, they actually try, started to, you know, thinking, uh, taking the initiative, you know, to, to change the complete economic uh, livelihoods over there. And but people at the beginning, there was no much responses. Only uh, 38 families we found in the beginning, only they got response and they, they give re response. Uh, so it was though it was a huge uh, budget, they, uh, they have you know the the gap you know and also. Um, but over the period, you know, uh, uh, more than uh, three decades long, government have though tried to you know patronize you know plow cultivation, but even though people are continue, continued, you know, for the land issues, though this is very important issues, and even no, not a single officers, out of 40 officers, not a single officers are aware about the Chitong Hill Tax record, not aware about the Chitong Hill Tax land issues. So if there is a cell, then I think they can play a role to coordinate also, they can also can coordinate with the Ministry of Land and Ministry of Law. Otherwise, is uh, uh, the, these issues should be uh, no, is not taking the getting the priority. And the Songhe Tara Bosabas Kore are ei onchole amra ei discarded obostha bosabas kore. We have been you have been living in the hills, but we have been living in a different land. So basically, as we are the indigenous people, we are the same, but we are tortured just like you, and we have been killed as well recently, as we have seen in the media. Yeah. Uh, I, I do understand, uh, I do agree that, yes, the problem in Chidong, uh, Plain Lane also are... ...way of addressing the people and also way of addressing cross-border, cross, like, and not like post-national anything like that, but really complicating the nation uh, via producing these sort of narratives and translating them into, so whether it's in the form of songs, whether it's in the form of um, uh, simply vocabularies, like there's an initiative to map how land in English might be just this thing called land, but there are seven other words for different seasons of the land in which different kinds of ecologies develop that, that are then understood. And so those sort of ways of complicating even the archive, but also, um, yeah. I, I just want to add something to that. And actually this was said to me by David Garneau, who's just sitting down there, David. Um, in one of our earlier discussions on Skype, you said the very appropriate thing, that this question of the indigenous term is actually a non-indigenous project. So somehow there is um, a need by non-indigenous populations to get up to speed, and we're talking about bureaucracy and political action also, 
um, to get up to speed. So yeah, remaking those maps, actually, that's perhaps the non-indigenous project that we need to do. We need to remake the maps that, you know, there are tools. But then there's another body of knowledge, which is just as important or more, but it's how the two then dialogue. If, if I um, also um, respond to this discussion, um, person, that it's extremely hard to communicate uh, some of the experiences as a bilingual person to a monolingual person because uh, you sort of live in a different world. Um, so for example, this consciousness about the language of categorization that you can also be bilingual when it comes to that type of language, how you categorize. Um, what kind of categories you, you have and, and how these uh, relate to each other and so on. Uh, so, <clears throat> so it, uh, and then one, if one look at the practical side of such a project, because as I said, every bilingual person has done that job to sort of uh, com try to communicate to the monolingual this, uh, this experiences that you have. Uh, for example, uh, loss of language. Uh, if you um, communicate that to a monolingual person, that person won't understand what that is about. Uh, so <clears throat> so uh, it is this uh, ontology that, uh, they, uh, that uh, you, you then have to, to work with. And then the question becomes, how many negotiations do you have the energy, the time, and the capacity to, to live through? that it resonates very w much where I come from, but in a more immediate, violent present that it's almost impossible to comprehend. But what I'm hearing here is um, another way of speaking the truth that's also strategic. So it begins with recognizing Bangladesh as a colonial nation and insisting on saying that. As indigenous people, we recognize Bangladesh as colonizing us. Then you enter another discourse rather than agree that, they're in a, you, that you're in a post-colonial condition. Indigenous people are not in a post-colonial condition. Another way of remapping or reframing the Inuit and all the other, the Dene, the translation in English always means the people. You're the people of that land. You are that land. And that is something that can never be argued away, legalized. I, there's no other way. That is a fact. And always insisting on those two things. I don't know, but I'm going to presume that you have a spiritual relationship to that territory. These things are incomprehensible to the kind of language that you're using earlier in terms of economics and so on. It's important for us to know that, but as a fellow Indigenous person, I recognize you in your relationship to territory, not as someone who paid cotton tax and all these atrocities. That's all I want to say. Uh, my view is, you know, there is a, uh, some, uh, you know, organization working in the national level on land issues. Um, and also in the international level, so there is an international land coalition, I think, and they have, there is a, you know. So these issues uh, has been, you know, presented several times, but, uh, yeah, but by the political parties, but from the, uh, you know, in the in the UN uh, General Assembly, and also some in the international you know uh, in the forums about the Chitong Hill Tax uh, land issues. Uh, but I don't uh, but I don't think so. You know when these days issues governments just simply sometimes try to defend you know that there is no indigenous people at all in Bangladesh. Then that means it's easy to neglect the issues or avoid the issues not to give the attention, yeah. That we have uh, this regulation, that means uh, we, we have been ruled differently, you know, uh, than others at the plain land. So we should uh, give some, you know, a special status like this. But what I also, but what I try to, you know, get inside the 1900 regulation, it was not also unfavorable to the uh, local peoples, you know, because 
for how the because they framed that law for the their own interest so now if you go uh, so it's a very challenging because um, we cannot uh, if you want to go beyond the 1900 regulation actually people enjoy their lives and livelihood uh, based on you know uh, their own customs and tradition so it was not uh, reflected or framed by the law before. So that's why indigenous people is issues when they address the things that we have been living their land time immemori immemorial, you know. So that's a, a, a good, you know, way of, you know, claiming their own rights. So and also uh, the next one in the, in the post-colonial period, uh, particularly from the since 1947. So I'm trying to, you know, the, you know, uh, we try to f find uh, these uh, two phases of the how was the land being the you know people started to lose the land uh, uh, this is the map you know uh, what I'm uh, trying to focus in the, the red uh, color one this is the Chitong Hill text area in Bangladesh map uh, uh, this is the overall map is uh, here like this uh, so it will be uh, you know just will give you some idea about which area I'm, I'm talking about, you know. Uh, well, <coughs> also com uh, coming to the point, I just like to try to draw you some, you know, idea about the indigenous people issues. Uh, that uh, you know, when we talk about the indigenous people issues, there are it's not a uh, unique things. There are 45 ethnic groups are uh, you know claiming themselves as indigenous peoples, both in the in the plain land and hill land. So. Chidong Hill Tracks, actually there are uh, ethnic groups, uh, 11 ethnic groups who have been uh, living over uh, there since the time immemorial. So, uh, and the population, you know, there is no the concrete population size, but indigenous people are claiming themselves there are more than 3 million people uh, among the 45 ethnic groups. Uh, the, you know about and also uh, I'm not going to the in the last one that about the debate about who is indigenous or not. This is a very old uh, debate and it's never been uh, you know resolved because of government sometimes recognize and government say yes there are indigenous people sometimes they say no. In terms of when uh, you know uh, try to give the some rights then they try to you know uh, abstain from recognizing. So uh, this is uh, also you know sometimes you know this. Uh, long pending issues. Uh, <coughs> uh, so in the colonial period I also trying to you know focusing two phases uh, the co company period and also be, uh, and the company period especially before the crown uh, taking of uh, over the, you know charts the CST it was ruled by the East India Company uh, they, they, actually, the British company they came to for a business purpose in the Indian subcontinent, but uh, but they slowly you know take over the you know uh, control the power and, uh, uh, and and also the authority establish authority, and they did actually uh, did a very good job uh, for their business purpose. Uh, so it's like uh, you might know about the how the you know uh, British uh, before starting the uh, establishing British colonization uh, how company they make the business and also you know using the local power and etc so what I found that but the in Chitong Hill tracks uh, um, they went and the hundred years long when comp uh, company was there they actually focused not that much on the administrative things uh, they didn't interfere that much on the uh, indigenous people, local affairs, but they, you know, started to they focus on the uh, Jum tax because Jum tax is a one kind of uh, Jum cultivation. You might know is a sitting cultivation. It's called uh, academic words uh, um, where the people produce, you know, li um, you know, uh, rice and also other grains in the hill, and and but the companies started to, you know. Uh, pushing the you know the uh, you know zoom tax over the people, so this is the starting point of how the local people started to lose their economy uh, um, uh, since then. So 
uh, but and also the zoom tax in the zoom tax issues also people were not happily you know given to the company uh, they are not uh, sometimes they also revolt so historically we find uh, you know time frame that in 17 1776 uh, people you know try to abstain not to give the tax uh, and then you know company uh, also uh, there is an economic blockade you know the, that they didn't allow the company to come to the market you know so it's a te one decades long there was a you know struggle they faced and finally uh, the you know the people from the Chitong Hill Tech area they are bound to you know came to the agreement with the company to some extent they okay we will give you tax but give us allow to do you know eco uh, economic exchange or you know with the you know plain land people uh, so this, this it was the you know struggling uh, point of that period and also the the amount of the year tax was also very high from that con uh, the period you know it's a hundred kilo cotton for per family it was imposed and after two years it is again you know then they said okay this we don't want to take cotton but uh, you have to give the money instead of the cotton so again when it then then it's become a, uh, another you know challenges they face because they have to sell the cotton to the market and uh, you know businessmen they don't want to give the proper price so they become started to get uh, exploitation you know face the exploitation on the, you know since then so uh, so the over, over the hundred years long company you know you know uh, all interfere you know local people's livelihood and they are you know in, in a, uh, to some extent, but not that much, I can say. If you come in the, you know, when the British Crown, you know, take charge from the company in 1860s and until the, you know, they left in 1947, it was a great, you know, challenges for the CST people because uh, <coughs> uh, what they did uh, in 1860 when they take the charge, they make a separate district from the plain land, you know. Uh, See, uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, the whole the Chidong area was this one also including, but they make it uh, it's a border uh, in the 1860s because of they wanted to not to allow the zoom cultivation or sitting cultivation in the in the rest of the area and from the area they said okay you only can cultivate this Chitong Hill Text area, Jum cultivation, but not other, other rest of the area. It's a, there's a, um, I'll coming to the, I'll, I'll explain more further. And, and also, uh, after eight years, when they declared the Chitong Hill Tracks as a separate district, um, then they declared the, the, the you know, Terra Nullius doctrines, and there, there is a one, you know, academic terminology that what it is, you know, whenever they go any parts of the world, they f they feel that the, the land is no one's land. Yeah. This is the no peoples are there. So it's the also the same, you know, theory also they applied in the Chitong Hill Tracks. Uh, the, uh, the main purpose is actually to, you know, to uh, avoid or, you know, not to recognize the local people's existence over there. 